All right. So I'm gonna wait and do this review. Uh, I wanted to do it earlier, but I keep catching fish and the rod keeps proving itself. So now I'm ready to do the review. We're talking about the iRod Kaimana 794 Pose Mag Stick. So this is an inshore rod. It's seven foot nine. It has a it has a nice long handle on it. So anybody that is a swim bait guy, um, I mean most of us usually appreciate this long handle. I'll go into why I like it um, in detail. But it's a beautiful rod. I have it matched up with my Azillion. I was throwing the um, the Daiwa Coastal TWS previously. Switched it out. Put this one on just because I had other line. Uh, the tattoo is balanced great on this. Look good on it. Everything. Uh, all the components are cool. You know, has slightly bigger eyes as it is an inshore rod, and it, um, so it'll handle it'll handle braid to uh, leader connections through the guides, which is a nice convenience. I, I haven't always been about that, but fishing more in the salt, I've got into it lately. I'm checking my line out, finding stuff. Um, but uh, so, anyways, this rod's incredible. This is a uh, Overall, like the best overall rod I've used in a very long time. I mean, in my opinion, just the balance, uh, the taper. Uh, so far, durability, who knows? But everything's nice. The components are nice without being extravagant. Even the front aluminum uh, check here in front of the threads looks great. Um, I'm pretty rough on my stuff. So the first three guides are double-footed, which are nice. These are single-footed. Uh, they don't bend too too bad, you know, and I'm all over them. So, uh, it's just a bare bones rod. I mean, it's not too fancy, I guess, in terms of, you know, high this, you know, high modulus or, you know, super, super light, anything like that. But for the retail at about 180, I believe, um, it's just incredible. So when I first got this rod, I went down to Long Beach for the Fred Hall. Met uh, T and a bunch of cats from Save On Tackle. Um, ended up talking to Matt Newman. And the vibe I got about iRod in general, just speaking with Matt through the internet and in person, is um, he's very responsive and, and open to angler input, not just pros on tour or whoever. Like, it's cool he has the Bub Tosh punch rod and he let Bub do what he wanted on that rod. And speaking of, uh, you know, speaking with other about him with other rods and projects you know he he let the angler dictate what they needed out of the rod he's very open it's just you know it's it, in in the rod industry it's not always that way so that was a really cool I, you know i don't really i didn't have really any i rods i had one that i had got the 804 which is a, a inshore like this just a little heavier um very parabolic it's a it's a, a moderate action um great rod for what you need it for you know i've been using it for various baits weighed hogs glide baits 250s caught some good fish on uh stripers and stuff on a great rod but we ended up going fishing with t um and some homies phil and a bunch of cats nick from uh cast and crank podcast they were gracious enough to take us out um and got to use this rod here I ended up throwing the, the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper on it for Calico and stuck a really nice Calico out there because of the great guide. You know, I was just casting, just casting where they told me, you know. And um, it was cool, and this rod just handled it great. I mean, good Calico. It was up in a, like a boil kind of, up on the shore. Swell came up, receded out, and as I hooked that fish, the swell was pushing back up in the shore. There was no issue pulling them out, fought them great, kept that little hook buried without applying too much pressure, being too fast, but still drives it home. So after that fish, I was like, wow, this rod feels really good in hand and it handled that fish well. Um, I can't wait to get it home to the Delta because it's rated from a half ounce to two ounce, even though I, I you know, I throw hard baits up to four ounces on this. Uh, if it's a glide, that's just my preference, but um, excited to get it home. So we got it home. When I got home, it was uh, it was like the, the stripers were in. I found some stripers. Uh, I was throwing mostly big stuff for them because the bait they were after. But my eight inch glide, I had tied up to this. Uh, there's some pictures on my Instagram. 
I caught a bunch of stripers from, you know, 18 to 28 maybe inches on this on the glide um, with braid. And with glide baits, I like my rods a little lighter. So that's why I chose to use this. Uh, it handled it great. And then from there, I moved on and this, my new frog came out, this Wade Frogs. And uh, this weighs 2.6 ounces without a hook. It's a buzzer style frog, so you use it on top water, cover, whatever it is. And uh, a problem I have with that style lure, I think a lot of people have, is they'll use too stiff of a rod, especially since it's a big frog and a lot of plastic and a 10 knot hook. You wanna use like a stiffer swim bait rod, but how they eat the bait and how the bait is fished on the braid and stuff, they, it just seems to me that if you don't have a soft rod, they can't eat it. So this is not a soft rod, but it has a moderate bend and it's a little softer for this style bait, you know, than most people might prefer to use. But as soon as I put it on, it started using it and it was game on. Like it has everything it needs to, to cast this lure and handle it well. It has this long handle um, for the larger lures. So when you whip it out there, you're not feeling unbalanced. That's the key with that is that this thing feels so balanced in your hand because it has this extended handle, it's seven foot nine, but with the longer handle, there's less rod out front. To me, that's very important, not only for balance and fatigue, but while I'm fishing, when I set the hook and want leverage on a fish, I like to have it in here. I don't want a bruised rib cage, anything like that. So I used to fish like that, but I mean, I'm telling you, the little inconvenience of the long handle of maybe passing it in front of you or making flips and pitches, it, that's usually the inconvenience of switching hands, you know, or, um, you know, anything like in short quarters is the only thing I can think of because it adds so much value. But anyways, so started fishing it on this here and it was right away. It was right away that I knew I had to use this because I was getting bites and putting them in the boat, use a stiffer rod, missed them, go back. You know, and the only question was like, I guess might've been is does it have the horsepower to pull out a big fish eating a big lure in heavy cover? Well, I got lucky enough to stumble onto a fish that was in the very large size. I don't weigh my fish, but it was 25 plus inches and pretty fat. You can see the picture, you know, it was a nine to 10 pound range. Um, eight behind a weed clump, in cover, in current, set the hook on her, dragged her right to the boat. Never, the rod never gave an inch. It powered her right in. So, I mean, with the stripers, it's cool. I, I, I knew it was a powerful rod, but you don't have I can't I don't really pull too hard but with this one it was locked down drag her in and uh, that was never an issue so I mean my my confidence after that skyrocket you know skyrocket with this as in it'll hold all sizes of fish but even the big fish can't can't really get it down you know can't bend it all the way to its max and, and make it make you feel like you're being overpowered by the fish so um since then I tied on the hollow belly frog just a regular frog, snag proof, whatever, you know, um, Sanford frog, the Fred frog is what I throw a lot. Um, but, um, and it still does that well. Like I prefer this for the frog because I don't want bruises in my rib cage and I have no problem handling this with dexterity and stuff. Some people may, you know, you know, I understand that. But punching everything, I've, I tied the punch on it after I hit the frog. It has the right flex for a frog. It's like a moderate fast. It's not all the way moderate, but it's not a really super fast rod either. It's pretty dynamic. It, it bends fast tip, and but bends deep. Um, and then on the punch too. The punch too, I don't mind this handle. It just It's just me, you know, it might be me. Um, I just see the advantages to the longer handle. Um, the, the real advantage is the balance of the rod, the way it feels in hand, the flex, the taper seems perfect. Um, for me, I like long handles, um, so it makes it that much better. But I've used it for my waking crank, my whipper snapper, my slob stopper, all my smaller toxic baits. I would highly recommend if you get a hold of one of these rods. This will work for everything, like three ounces and down, I'd say, um, from the micro mink down. Um, and, uh, I mean, anybody that, that, that's looking for a rod in this class, I, I haven't found something that it doesn't do right. Just, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy how nice it is. So that's why I'm doing this review um, and putting it out there because, you know, there's a lot of gr a good rods on the market, I'm sure. But this is a great rod.
in my opinion. Like I'm telling you, this is one of the best I've used. So they're kind of out of stock. I know they're getting a new shipment in soon. I mean, I'm probably gonna pick up four or five just because I do so much of this. I don't fish tournaments very often. You know, I have a lot of rods already, but it, it's so perfect for what I do a lot, which is like a hollow belly swim bait or that frog or a, a regular hollow body frog um, or punch in or big plastics, top water baits like my slob stoppers, um, bigger buzz baits, just stuff that I enjoy throwing, crawlers. Um, and it's, a really a breath of fresh air to have a rod like this that I feel confident in throwing a jig hook or a weedless style bait with a single hook and I could just put it right into throwing treble hook baits and feel like it's not going to be shut off too early and rip the treble hooks out so um my main deal was to just kind of get this information out there um you know like Matt doesn't give me free stuff you know what I mean I'm not I don't have, I didn't sell everything to invest in iRod um, just because, you know, for a sponsorship or something, being 100% honest. But after using these, I think all my rods are going to slowly switch to iRod. Um, if they're all this quality and there's a, there's a great selection now, there's different ranges. He has the Crusher series, the lower model series, which is the Genesis. And then I think he has the Air series. You can get anything in any price range. And after my experience with these, I mean, I, I don't know how I could go wrong. So I'll probably get maybe like the Bub's Punch Rod because I like spiral wrapped. This is just conventional wrapped, um, which hasn't caused any issues, but you know, just my preference, especially for punching. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know what else to throw at this rod to make it, you know, to try to put it to a test it hasn't stood up to yet. So, 100%, 7.94, I rod Kaimana. I mean, I'm nobody special, but I've got to put this through the paces this year, and luckily I've hooked the large fish of, of the year on this, and it hasn't missed a beat. Go get it. When it comes out, go get this shit. Excuse my language. But, you know, I believe in it. So, uh... You know, keep it short and sweet. Thanks for uh, for checking this out. iRod's definitely in my view now, um, especially after talking to Matt, you know, and its own, you know, when the guy that owns the company is basically like a swim bait legend, you know, for someone like me, it's hard to, to look away. And then I got the product and I don't know, man, I'm telling you. About to do damage on these. The whole deck of the boat's gonna have those on there. So, uh, if you have a chance or you're in the market for that style rod, seven foot nine, um, heavy duty, conventional or light swim bait stuff, flip in, frog and stuff like that, and you're a fan of long handles, longer handles, um, just do yourself a favor and get it. So, thanks for checking me out.